Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to give you six tips to customize Parcel.js to fit your needs. Now I've done a video before on the basic install, but I'll go over it here again briefly to show you how to get started. Ideally, you're going to install it globally on your machine, but the first thing we need to do is to get npm on in our directory here. So I've gone ahead and just add a, added our basic package.json file. This file will basically track any dependencies we have. So if you move uh, machines or something like that, you've got everything ready here and it'll download it for you. The next thing we're going to do is install parcel locally. And so we'll do npm install parcel bundler dash dash save dash dev. And this might take just a second. As it installs, let me just kind of walk you through what parcel does. If you haven't used parcel before, it's a bundler. So it, you send it a file or multiple files as I'll show you today. And it will basically grab all your dependencies and minify them and basically do magic on them so that you can just get a server up running and start developing right away. So it's great because it's so quick and easy to use. It is fairly opinionated though. And so one of the things we'll need to do today is kind of customize some of those opinions to fit your specific needs. So here I've gone ahead and installed the parcel bundler. You'll notice that it's added all these node modules, which are the things that actually run parcel for us. And then in here, it's given us this dev dependency. Now, the next thing we need to do is to simply add both a dev script and a build script. So with parcel, for the dev script, you literally just do parcel and then you point to the file you want it to watch. Now in this case, we're gonna have it watch our index.html file in our source folder. So from the root directory, we'll do src and then index.html. We do a comma here and then we can add a build script as well. For build, parcel will actually kind of tighten down all the screws and make it as minified as possible. So we would just do build src index.html. Okay, and that's all you do literally, and then you're set and ready to go. So what we'll do here is we're gonna go ahead and say npm run dev, and that's the script that we just wrote up above, and hit enter here, and it will spit it out at localhost 1234. So if we come over here and refresh, you see I've got this image gallery. I don't think I've actually done this on the channel yet. I'll do this at some point where it slides along here. Um, but you'll notice the other thing it did is it created this .cache folder, and then it gave us a distribution folder. This is all the default uh, functionality of Parcel. Now, to make it to where all your assets are always uh, ready, that there's no problems with caching or anything like that, it always generates some random hash on these images and on your JS files, it gives you maps. It uh, does the same thing for your style, um, for your CSS files as well. So all of these are generated automatically by Parcel and you basically don't touch anything in your distribution folder but it may be that you wanna customize some of this functionality and that's what this video is all about. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and stop the server here and I'm gonna just walk you through step-by-step step how to get this started. So the first thing we can do is if you want it to open automatically, let's come back to our package.json file. So like for our dev script, what I can do is just add dash dash open and then when I run my script, the first thing it'll do is it'll just open it automatically for us as soon as it's ready and there you go. So that's one cool kind of trick you can do and uh, saves you one step where you don't have to open it yourself. Step number one was pretty easy. Second thing you can do is you can add multiple entry points or globs here. So I would come over here and let's just grab this. What we're doing is we're saying anything in our SRC folder that has the HTML uh, ending to it, the file type, go ahead and Let's remove this open so it doesn't do that for us. Go ahead and get that ready for us as well. So it's watching now both this index.html page and the secondary.html. So let me come back over this way, get rid of this, and I'll say stop the server and run it again. And now it's gonna watch both of those. Now, one thing you need to know here is if I come over here and refresh, it's not gonna give it to me because I actually will need to type in index.html and then uh, let's see, secondary, I think is what it was, .html, which just has secondary. It has nothing in it, really. Um, but you can have multiple files that it's watching, and then it'll output all of those on your dev server for you. Okay, so that's step one and step two, or kind of tip one and tip two. Next, let's say you say, hey, I don't like this dist folder. I, I want it to be called something else. Uh, you can add dash dash out dash dir, and then add the name of the file, the folder you want it to be in, or just do dash D and same thing. So the, both 
this, and this will do the exact same thing. So for uh, readability's sake and to make it a little shorter, let's stop our server here. And what we'll do is come up here and say dash D public. Just to make sure it's working here, we'll actually delete this uh, distribution folder altogether, just so you can see it work kind of live. I'll save the package.json file. And then we're gonna come in here and say run dev. Now let's watch it. And there's the public folder already ready for us. And you see all of our files are in there uh, just like they were in the distribution folder. You can actually nest them as well. So if you came in here and said like public build or something like that, they would be under public. And then there'd be another directory called build and then everything would be inside that. So that's tip one, tip two, and tip three. Now next, let's say, hey, I don't, I want to kind of do my own port. I want to do it on port 1111 or whatever. That's totally fine. You can do that with parcel. So I'll come in here. I'm going to remove this. Come in here. Let's get rid of all this. We'll just have it do it in its standard distribution folder. And but I will change it to a different port. Now, if you already have something running on port 1234, parcel will automatically generate a new port. Um, but this is if you have a port in mind that you want to use. Let's again delete this just to make sure that everything is working as we expect. And when we run this, we should see a distribution folder and we should see it come out on port 1111. Now, if I come over here and change this to 1111, it doesn't seem to like me. Let me actually click on this and just make sure I'm not messing something up. Oh, I am not, but I forgot to change this back to index.html. Um, or we could keep it at where it's watching all those files. But let's come back over this way. I need to stop my server, start it up again and refresh the page and there we go okay so you can change the port the default port where it shows that was tip four let's go to tip five now when you're building out parcel one of the cool things is it'll give you really great errors actually in the web browser as well so like if i came over here and changed this to like style two or something that's not going to work and it'll give me the exact error here and down here in the console but both in the build process you see here this is a fairly short build process it doesn't tell us a whole lot uh, and even in the error handling here, um, you can improve upon this with adding more detailed logs. And so what I've got over here is a different log levels that they'll show. And this is just a screenshot here from their website. So by default, it's three. It'll show you log errors, warning, and then any info. But you can actually increase the amount of information you get. So you can change it to log level four or five. Or you can go down if you say, hey, I, I don't want any logging at all. I don't want warnings. I don't want errors. I just want to fly with my eyes closed. Well, you can do whatever you want. But we could come over here to package.json. Let's remove this default port and we'll change this to log level four, save the file, start our server all over again, which means I need to come over here and change this to one, two, three, four. And there it is. And you'll notice in addition to the errors we're going to get in a moment here, all this detailed information just by changing it up one log level. So I could also uh, come in here and change this to like style two again and save it. And now I'm getting an error. It doesn't give me a too detailed error here, um, but you can see even by the build process, it's giving you a lot more information and on some errors, uh, it'll do that as well. All right, final tip for you today is to disable source maps. If you don't want source maps, if that's not how you roll, that's totally fine. You can come in here, let's stop the server and you can change this to say, hey, I don't want any source maps. Now, on most of these, you can do them on, on the dev or the build. Uh, today, I've just shown you doing it on dev, but the build script is meant for like your production site. So whenever you're ready to actually send out your production site. So if you don't want source maps there, again, you just add it down here um, as well. Let's come up here, run Dave, uh, run our dev server here and come back to our distribution folder. And now some of these maps are here because of, they were there before. So let's delete that so we can make sure that it's all working properly. So I'm going to stop this, come back up here, run dev. Okay, we're getting an error. Forgot to change our file back. Chris, come on, man. All right, stop our server, run it one more time with no source maps. And if I come over here, refresh, that's working. Come over to our distribution folder. You see we've got no source maps at all in here, just kind of the raw outputted files. Now there are a bunch of other options you can do here, like removing some of these cache uh, hashes and stuff like that. But that's some of the kind of brilliance of Parcel. Um, but if you want to know more, most of the things, I think all the things I got today uh, were found under the CLI feature, where they just kind of walk you through different options you have. And so you can see like changing the log level, that's where I got that screenshot from, the port, 
uh, enabling HTTPS. There's a bunch of different things you can do. You can disable minification on uh, build scripts. Uh, so there's a bunch of different things you can do, and uh, you can play around with this. There's also a bunch of advanced options down here, um, but I'll let you play with that yourself. If you want me to do more on Parcel, let me know. And uh, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe, like the video, and I appreciate you watching. I will catch you next time. Happy coding.